Accounting Equation and Excel. Pay bills form. Paying off, paying down, accounts receivable. Get ready and some coffee because we're learning the accounting foundations with the Accounting Equation and Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or you can just build your own worksheet as we go or possibly just use paper and pencil to follow along. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet basically working with a template as we do data input now adjusting the worksheet as needed going forward let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing looking at a transaction paying down the accounts payable in a prior presentation we looked at transactions that increase the accounts payable those being build type transactions remembering that we want to be very specific with the terminology that we are using. And this will be important depending on what industry you're in, what accounting software you're in, and if you're in school, what textbook you will be using because you can get things wrong by just misinterpreting what it is that's being said. And in different contexts, words can mean different things. So in the prior presentation, we talked about a bill form, remembering that if I do data input of a bill form, in say a QuickBooks, then the bill form means that accounts payable is going up, meaning I made a purchase on account, didn't pay cash for it, therefore accounts payable is gonna go up and I'm gonna have to pay that off in the future. Remembering that even if I got a bill form from like the utility company from Edison, let's say, and it said invoice on it, it would still be to me a bill, even though the accounting software that generated it from the perspective of Edison sees it as an invoice. And if I took that bill and simply paid it without entering it as a bill in the system, then I actually wouldn't use a data input form of a bill form because I just paid it off. Therefore, I would use a data input form of a check form, simply paying off the bill as I get it more modern software using bank feeds to basically do that. That might be a wireless type of, of uh, a wired up type of transaction that you do basically automatically. So that's the first thing we hit. We enter the bill. The bill is going to be increasing the accounts payable. Once the accounts payable is up, we have to pay off that accounts payable. We don't get another form telling us to do that. It's not like we're going to get another form. We might get a reminder to pay the bill from like the utility company, but uh, in general, we're going to have to say, when is it due, track it, and then pay it off. So we're not going to get an actual form, but we still think of it as a data input form in many accounting softwares, which might be called a pay bill type of form, which by definition means for that purpose that we're paying down the accounts payable. We're writing a check, but oftentimes many accounting softwares such as QuickBooks will not simply use a check form to indicate it, but rather a specific check form, a pay bill check form, which will indicate to us that not only is the checking account going down, but the other side is paying off the uh, accounts payable rather than, than paying for something with cash off the bat. All right, 
So that's going to be our transaction. We'll enter a bill and then we'll pay off the bill just to see that full transaction. Remembering that the practice tab will have some pre-formatted cells. Uh, it'll look very similar to the blank tab as we have it now, though, because we're going to be working with our template. So we're going to start off with, we have our accounting equation up top. We're going to start off with that initial investment. I'm just going to leave that on the books uh, at the 50,000, which I deleted. Let me put this back on the books here. Hold on a second. All right, so now we have 50,000 on the books. That's the initial investment from the owner, just so we have some cash in the business. And that means from an accounting equation standpoint, we have cash. If we liquidated the business, all that cash would go to equity, the owner, whether that be a sole proprietorship in our case, or if it was a partnership, we'd have to break it out between the partners. Or if it was a corporation, we'd have to break it out based on the shares that are outstanding. All right, so now we're going to say on... 115 we're going to enter another bill so let's say we bought office office supplies let's say supplies uh on account meaning on account let's see if i could spell that right so from an accounting equation standpoint first question is cash affected we're going to say no it's not affected because it says on account some textbooks use that as the language obviously if you're in practice you, you might get a bill for it, or you might be purchasing something that you're purchasing basically on account. So we know that cash wouldn't be affected. And then we're going to say, well, that means that liabilities are going to go up. That's going to be the accounts payable, which I'll also have to track in the sub ledger by who we bought it from. Let's imagine we bought it here from uh, Office Depot, let's say. And then the other side, then we have the question of, should it be an expense? or should it be an, an asset? And this is kind of an open question because uh, if we're in a business where the supplies are a significant asset to us, we might wanna track it in a similar way as inventory. So I just wanna point this out as we go through this example, because we looked last time at the accounts payable going up if we, if we purchased an expense like the utility bill, or if we purchased a asset like furniture and fixture, which means the asset would go up instead of an expense or inventory, in which case usually the asset would go up instead of expense. What about supplies? Well, if it's like medical supplies and you have a lot of medical supplies and you need to track them and make sure those crazy drug fiends aren't breaking into your place and stealing the medical supplies because for whatever purposes, then you're probably going to have to track it as inventory, putting it on the books as an asset. And then, and then tracking it, possibly using a flow assumption, first in, first out, LIFO, weighted average, counting the supplies, making sure that you're taking care of them, and then writing them down in a similar way that we would with inventory. However, if they are small supplies, staples or something like that, then you might not be tracking them as closely, and you're just going to expense them because that would be the easy thing to do. So for us, we're just going to expense it here, imagining they are small supplies, and we're just going to expense them out. So I'm going to go and say, all right, let's 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 say that the accounts payable, one side of the transaction, every transaction has two sides. Accounts payable is going to be equal to the AP. Uh, where's the amount? There's no amount. Let's put the 750, let's say. 750 of supplies. Okay. So now the accounts payable goes up 750. The other side, I'm just going to put an, as an expense. It's in equity. But in the expense side of things, the expense is actually going up, but revenue minus expenses resulting in net income on the income statement will be going down as expenses go up, which means equity will be going down. So I'm going to represent the expenses with a negative number, negative 750. Oh, wait, that's in the wrong line. Dude, dude. All right, negative 750. So I just put negative and then scrolled over to the 750. All right, so that's going to be the idea. Let's copy this down. I'm going to copy this formula down, which will pull that transaction over. Nothing happened to, cat, to assets. The accounts payable, liability went up, and then equity went down. Notice that these, this side of the transaction is similar in that it represents who has claim to the assets so if if accounts payable goes up and the other side of the transaction is in the equity the equity has to go down right these two have to zero out so we're going to say all right that's good let's put some zeros in here zero 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 so i can put some underlines 
Notice I kept the formatting of the underlines that was in there before. So it's already got the uh, underline under the zero tab, 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 zero tab. So let's just keep that. And then on the sub ledger, I'm going to say that uh, we didn't, it's not Edison this time. It's Office Depot. We purchased from Office Depot, let's say. So I'm going to say this equals on the sub ledger tracking who we purchased from. That's the wrong line. Let me do that again here. Practiced who we purchased from, 750. So now I'm going to say the total is going to be equal to the one above it plus the sum of these two. Okay, so that means the sub ledger is now tracking who we owe the money to, but it's it's tracking who we owe it to. So it's breaking out by vendor so that we'll be able to pay off the bills later, which we will do shortly. All right, so then we have, let's put the balance down here. Balance. So we started off with 50,000 in cash, no transaction to cash. So I'm just going to do my sum. Wait, let's undo that. Okay, Paso equals the sum of these two. I'm going to copy that right click and copy and then paste that across pasting it val uh, formulas only boom and i'm going to do that over here right click and paste it formulas only and do that over here and then right click and paste it formulas only all right let's go back on over and copy this down so i'm going to drag this down so now we have fifty thousand here still dragging this down we now have zero plus 750 is 750. Dragging this down, we have 50,000 plus 750 is 49,250. Or in other words, we have assets of 50,000 cash and liabilities accounts payable of 750. 50,000 minus 750 gives me the 49,250 book value of the business. Why does that make sense? Well, what would happen if I liquidated the business? I'd have to pay off the 750 here and then, and then the idea would be I've consumed the supplies, so they're basically gone, right? And then I'd have uh, the 50, then I'd have the, the 50,000 minus the 750, the 49,250 that would be left over, which I can then put back into my bank account if I wanted to stop at this point in time, if I want to pull out here. All right, but we're not. We're going to keep going forward here, and we're going to say on 120, let's say that we now pay off office depot so we've been tracking it for the supplies we've been tracking the supplies in our accounts payable and now we're saying they become due now as i look at this accounts payable thing just want to remind ourselves that small businesses if you do bookkeeping for small businesses you might not be tracking accounts payable as much because because you might be paying everything as they become due either with the checking account or possibly with a credit card. Be careful of the credit card. Uh, but that means you can do most of that work in accounting software, possibly with automatic bank feeds. Uh, the reason that's useful for small businesses is because it's not so important to wait until the last minute to be able to pay off bills because the dollar amount of the bill is relatively small and because you don't have as many transactions. In other words, if the rent becomes due, even if it's $2,000, if I pay it today versus 15 days from now, it's not a big difference in terms of the time value of money. But if I had $2,000 trans transactions and I had thousands of them, paying all of them off 15 days early will start to add up to a time value of money issue and a cash flow issue that could be more optimally managed if I paid them off as late as possible. And if the dollar amount wasn't $2,000, but $20,000, that 15 day period becomes more significant. So just remember, if you're doing bookkeeping for a small business, then, then accounts payable, you might try not to do accounts payable and say, hey, look, we're gonna be on a cash basis. I'm gonna do everything and automate everything with the use of bank feeds in something like a QuickBooks software or an equivalent of it, zero or whatever you're using there. Uh, but if you work in a larger business, you might specialize in accounts payable and say, hey, look, you have a lot of transactions. 
uh, time value of money is important with the number of transactions you have and the dollar amount you have. Therefore, I want to help you manage your transactions to pay them as late as possible, optimizing your cash flow and the time value of money. All right. So in any case, if we go, if we then go over here and say cash is going to go down by the 750 and then, and then on this side, the accounts payable is going to go down. Accounts payable is going to go back down by uh, the 750 and then the sub ledger wherever here for the accounts payable is also going to go down. So this is not like a third account that's being impacted. Remember that the accounts payable sub ledger is just more information, more detail about the general ledger account of accounts payable. So it's going to go back. It's going to go down. So negative 750. And that means that if I copy my this formula down, it goes back down to zero. There's my running balance. So we paid off. If I look at this column, this minus this office depot has been paid off that customer has been paid by the column. And then this way, I can see that my total accounts payable should be back down to zero. Remember that accounting software will often help us with this transaction. As we enter the pay bill form, adjusting the accounts payable ledger for us, accounting like software like QuickBooks, forcing us to do that, which is cool, but great, but also causes problems sometimes. Sometimes accounting software doesn't force us to keep these two sub ledger, the sub ledger in balance, and that becomes a problem. So if if you're you you one other area that you could be a specialist in bookkeeping in is that you clean things up, right? A lot of bookkeepers, they, they, they hire bookkeepers, they don't know what they're doing. The books become a mess. And, and one of the ways that things could be a mess is that the accounts payable doesn't match what is on the, the general ledger or the accounts receivable doesn't match what's on the general ledger or the inventory doesn't match what's on the general ledger. And, and you could be a cleanup artist trying to fix, <laughs> trying to fix that common uh, issue. <laughs> In any case, let's go back on over here and say, let's copy this down. So there's the 750. And so there's that and copy this down. So the transaction equals out. So assets now going down because I paid cash and the other side uh, liability should be going down. I have it. See how this is out of balance. My check figure turned red. So I'm going to pretend that I did that on purpose so that that would happen even though I totally didn't because you look over here and you're like, no, this should be a negative. It should be going down negative that. Okay. See how I totally did that on purpose so that you could see the data input. So if you thought if you were looking at it before and you're like, Hey, you messed up, then it's like, no, I didn't because I was teaching. It was for lesson purposes, home tab font. Let's put an underline here. Let's put an underline under these. All right, and then let's add, let's put the balance back in place. Bring all, bring down the balance. So wait, let me put my zeros in place. Uh, uh, zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, zero, zero, oh, zero tab, 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 zero tab, zero tab, tab, zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, zero, 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 zero. All right, now let's copy it down summing up just the last two not all the way up to here just these two so 50,000 minus 750 equals the sum a sum function because it's a negative number so if i sum them it will subtract them 49 250 copying that pasting it across pasting it with the formulas so it doesn't mess up my beautiful color scheme and then we'll take this one paste it and then take these and paste it formula only. All right. And then the sub ledger is good to go. And then let's copy this down. So now I'm going to copy it down. It's going to copy the, the underline, the underlines messed up, but I'll copy these down and then I'll get rid of the, Oh no. Okay. Paso. I messed it up. I'm going to copy these down and then I'll select these. I'm holding down control to select non adjacent cells, the ones that are not next to each other to get rid of the underline, because there's the balance. All right. So now the 50,000 minus the 750 means we have 49,250 of cash, 
the liability has now been paid off liability is now back down to zero and and all we have is really the 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 cash of the 49 uh, 250 why because the supplies that we purchased we're assuming that we consumed them within the business right you might be saying hey i still have the supplies but the idea is we didn't put them on the books as an asset we expensed them assuming that we're going to consume them either now or shortly in the in the to help us to generate revenue right and it would be like paying which is similar to what we saw before with utilities expense if i paid the electric bill we already consumed the electric bill to help us to generate revenue so it's not like i can really sell the supplies so they've been consumed right so all we have at this point in time uh is going to be the fifty thousand in cash so if i liquidated the business i currently have no liabilities to pay off i've got the 49 nine thousand two fifty in cash i lost the 750 it's been consumed if i stopped the business and liquidated at this time i could take the money 49 250 out and put it back in my account which is why the equity is currently at the 49,250, representing in essence the value of the business, but on a book basis.